Paul, obviously the, the results of the last few weeks probably haven't been quite quite what you wanted, but, but just put the season so far into perspective for us. You must be quite pleased in terms of where you are at this point in the season. Definitely. I mean, I think if someone had said to us back in the, the summer that we would have just four defeats in 26 games uh, in the Championship, I think we would have certainly signed up for that. And I think 11 wins and 11 draws is testament to the great work that Chris and his staff have done, but also the, the, the tremendously consistent performances of the players. It's been a, a good season so far, difficult month over Christmas and New Year. Um, but we also have to take into account that we've had six or seven injuries to key players during that period and that would hurt any squad, whether they're in the Premier League or the Championship. And obviously this time of year, it's transfer window, it's January. Uh, those injuries, I guess, changed plans and the way you approach that? A little bit. We had to just sort of refocus on a couple of key positions, uh, obviously get some extra cover in at left back and, and, and left centre half, which Liam Ridgewell has uh, filled uh, already very well. Uh, we wanted to try and get a little bit of business done early, which we did. Obviously, uh, signing Richie Tal before the window opened was, was important and then very quickly moving for, for Anthony Knockhart as well. So, you know, we did early business, which is, which is always good to do if it's possible to do. Um, and we've also still got a little bit more to do as we, as we go through the month. But as uh, the chairman has said, you know, we want to strengthen from, from a position of strength. And we are still in a position of strength in, in the playoff positions with 20 games to go. But we also need to make sure that we bring in the right players uh, at the right time at the right price. And getting that balance right in the January window does tend to be more difficult than the summer window when you have more time to negotiate deals. Is, is there any sort of expectation in terms of numbers, positions, in terms of that strengthening? No, I think, I think maybe, you know, maybe one more, um, maybe two, but, but, but certainly we want, to, we want to try and you know, increase our firepower up front. I don't think there's any secret about that. Um, but those strikers are in high demand and uh, you know, we're not the only club either in this division or the division above or the division below or in different leagues in Europe that are looking to do similar things. So you know, players like that will always come at a premium at the best of times and January isn't the best of times. So you know, we're having to work very hard. You know, we have our particular targets and we'll work through what we need to do to, to try and land one of them. And, and just touching on the deals that have been done already, obviously you must be pleased with those, Anthony Knockhart particularly which sort of came from nowhere, really. Yeah, again, Anthony's a player that's been on our radar for some time. Um, he's a high-quality player with a lot of experience of, of playing in this country, and particularly in the Championship, and was a very good and successful player during his time at Leicester City. So we, we, we knew about uh, Anthony. We knew about uh, a situation which wasn't working for him as, as well as it might have done in, in Belgium. We also knew the player was keen to come back to England. So you know, great work from the recruitment team to first of all get that information, and then obviously ultimately for us to get the deal done was, was great news. Richie again is another one who uh, had been known to us for some time, had, had worked with Colin Calderwood before, uh, had fantastic season in Ireland last year and obviously there is a, a difference between the Scottish League, the Irish League and coming into the Championship but we're very confident uh, in Richie and, and certainly his performances in training so far and in his outing at Hull, uh, we think we've got a, a very, very good young player there that, that could develop into a, 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 good, a good player for us. Uh, and Liam Ridgewell? decent bit of business in terms of even even the timing looking at um, the expectation on, on Gaytan to come back in in that Yeah, again, period. these things sometimes you have to be careful that you don't just overload uh, on, on one particular position because you've got injuries in that position because those players do come back from injury and then suddenly you know the manager's left with a squad where he can't accommodate everyone and he, he's perhaps deficient in other areas because you've, you've gone in, in one particular direction. But, but Liam's got great experience, um, again has worked with Chris, knows this division, knows English football, knows what it takes uh, for a side in our position to maintain the momentum that we've that we've we've had in the first six months of the season, um, but he's also got a commitment to MLS and to to go back for the start of their season uh, by the end of February, and, and obviously that puts a, a cap on his time with us. But in theory, and hopefully, uh, that will actually coincide with Gaten coming back from his injury, and, and ultimately Liam Rossini coming back as well as further cover uh, cover there as well. Hearing from the manager this morning, he he says that it's going to be important that the, the team work hard. Is there a feeling within the club that 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 hard work gets that one result, and then? 
potentially triggers that. Yeah, I mean, first of all, there, there's certainly no crisis and there's certainly no panic. You know, if you've lost four games in 26, um, you really do have a, a bit of quality about you and, and, a, and a little bit of consistency about you. But you do have, in the Championship, bad runs. And we saw that last season with Bournemouth, who had a little run. In previous seasons, other clubs that have been in promotion positions have all had their moments. Derby had theirs at the start of this season. I don't think they won any of the first five or six games. So every club in the Championship will have a difficult run. Every club will have injuries at some point. we have particularly unlucky that we lost a lot of starters in similar positions in a very short space of time. But we've also got to be careful not to expect too much from those players coming back from injury. It's going to take a while for them to get up to the levels that they were prior to those injuries. They were long-term injuries. They have taken a while to rehabilitate. So I think we've got to be patient. And Chris obviously now has more options at his disposal, both with the players that have come in during January, but also the players coming back from injury. That in turn will help the rest of the squad who've been really overloaded with games during that same period. And uh, if you look at the Middlesbrough game, where we were soundly beaten by a very good side, I think we had six or seven players who could reasonably have expected to start in that game who were just simply unavailable to Chris. That has to have an effect on, on the, uh, the, the, the quality of, of, of the side out there, but also the pressure on the players that are having to play every week uh, because of that. Um, so we've, we've, we've had that catch up with us. It's been a difficult month. Uh, but we're looking forward now to the next 20 games and the 60 points that are up for grabs. Together has been very much the underlying buzzword, if you like, this season. I, and, and the support from the fans has been superb throughout, throughout the, the, the season. The fans but are, I guess yeah. now that is, is when you need it. The fans have been magnificent. I mean, you know, right the way back to you know, this time last year when we really needed them and we were really struggling and we had that period where Nathan took charge for a couple of games. The fans were amazing at home to Reading and, and, and away at Fulham. And they've really been like that ever since. And, and um, we've, we've been through some much tougher times than we are currently going through and even much tougher times than we were facing this time last year and the fans were there. The Together theme, you know, has, has, has caught hold. It's, it's captured people's imagination. Sadly, what happened at Shoreham, I think, underlined it perhaps more than, than, than we could have ever imagined. Um, but obviously, during a period when you, you hit a few bad results and it doesn't go your way, uh, then the theme of Together is really important. Certainly inside the football club, there's a great strength of togetherness from the players, the coaches, the staff, the people behind the scenes that are supporting them. Um, and obviously, we've had great support from the fans as well. And obviously, you know, when, you, when you've lost two or three on the spin, people are disappointed. We understand that. But we also know that they're turning out in great numbers at Rotherham on a Tuesday night. That's a measure of real support and we're getting it. And that's fantastic. That great support as well seems to have translated half season tickets, club reporting, record sales and... And, and the season ticket number's still up there amongst the, the best in the Championship. It is. I mean, and, we, and, and even the Premier League. Indeed, indeed, in the Premier League as well. I mean, we, we're well into four figures on half-season tickets, which in, in my experience, nearly 20 years working in football, I've never seen half-season ticket sales like that. You might get three or 400, but you know, to get substantially more than that and into four figures that, is that well into four figures. That would have been the case with Spurs. Not even we would never sell that many in my time at Spurs. I mean, you know that 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 was yeah that was a number that, that we, we we couldn't have uh, expected. Um, and yeah, our crowds have been really good. And um, you know we've had we've had a lot of TV exposure this year, which has moved kickoff times around and dates of games around. And you know the vast majority of fans have been incredibly patient with that. They understand that if you're at the top of the table, you're more likely to get the profile that we're getting. We've got a couple more TV games coming up. Uh, where you know where we will have more changes to our to our fixtures, um, and we understand that does create inconvenience, but it also creates great profile for the club, great profile for our sponsors, uh, a great buzz around the city when we're when we're live on TV. So you know there are some negatives for fans and some inconvenience, but there are also many positives to the football club and to the city as a whole. One other area that the the club have made some investment recently is is, is with the pitch. If if you could just tell us about that, because obviously it's. It's coming for a little bit of criticism over the over the difficult winter period. Yeah, we've I mean we've had a particularly wet winter. Football pitches don't take well to huge deluges of rain, and particularly not just ahead of a game um, or just after a game, and even worse during a game. They cut up, and and we've been very unfortunate that on I think five or six occasions we've had to play matches in in very heavy rain. Obviously, we had the two Rugby World Cup matches that added to the, the workload of the pitch. But actually, after those matches, the pitch was in great condition. There was no real issues with that. And we've also had a couple of extra games. We had the women's game and we had an England uh, under-21 game as well. But in com comparison to last year, the difference, I think, is probably two football matches and two rugby matches. So, you know, there's not a huge amount of difference between the workload for the pitch this year versus last year. Last year, we were training on it a bit more than we were this year. So it does even itself out. 
Where Steve Winterburn and his team have been very unlucky though has been with the, with the, with the rain. And what people don't often realise is that sometimes rain after a game can be as bad as rain during or before a game because the ground staff can't get onto the pitch to do the remedial action which then actually uh, causes there to be further problems in the next game. So we've, we've invested in some extra kit for Steve and his team. There's a lot of work going on. Steve and his team are doing a great job. Um, and uh, like many, many clubs in the country, the pitch isn't aesthetically looking, looking as good as it, it usually does. But unfortunately, the weather is what it is. And, and uh, we have to contend with that. Uh, we can't beat it. Season ticket renewals, you took the rather extraordinary step of, uh, of almost announcing the what the fans can expect when those renewal packs land in, in February. All positive news, I, I think. Yeah, in we, terms want, of how we the wanted a combination, really, of, of, of giving fans confidence that whichever division we were in, you know, there was an opportunity for them to get their season ticket at a price that they could afford. And we also wanted to, to reward those fans that had been with us the longest. And, and you know, there's only so many ways we can do that without it becoming so complicated that, that it becomes unworkable. So the simplest way of doing it was to fix a price for those that are going to renew their season ticket and then look at uh, any new season ticket uh, purchases when the time comes, if the time comes, and whatever that price might be. So it's a great opportunity for fans to lock in now, regardless of the division we're in, at a price they know they can afford and you know we've been delighted with the response both uh, anecdotally and also with people writing into us through email phoning us and letting us know when they see us out and about uh, how well that's been received but I think that's well deserved because the support we've had not just since we've been at the Amex but before that has been phenomenal and uh, you know we're delighted to have had the response we've had. Season ticket numbers are one thing but I know the one area where you're you're keen to grow and, and the club is very keen to grow is that that casual fan base as well in terms of building up that layer of the, I guess, the next season ticket holders. It's really important. I know that, you know, our club perhaps more than others, you know, that the new fan sometimes comes in for a bit of stick, but we need them. You know, we were all new fans once. And I think it's really important that we embrace as many new fans as we possibly can. And we've got an initiative that we're launching uh, just this week where we, we want people to be encouraged to bring new fans to the games. And so we've got a special price where both an adult and a child can come to the game together for £30 and it's a little package which encourages people to bring a new fan to the club. We want more not less, we want to create a, a substantial number of people that are going to be fans of this club long after we're all gone and, and too old to, to get to games. And you know, from that point of view, that's a really important and responsible thing that we can do for the future generations of the club and for the, for the future security of this football club. And I guess that 20,000 season ticket base can can do that. It's up to them to help with that as well. In a way, they're our best recruiters. You know, they're already fans. They've already, the they've already sort of they've got the bug. You know, it's in their system. It's in their blood, and they're the best people for us to bring new people in and, and encourage them to come and come and experience what the atmosphere is like. Come and experience what it's like to win games in the last minute, to perhaps lose games in the last minute. You know, it's all those highs and lows of football that actually keep us coming back because we don't know what's going to happen next, and that's the adrenaline rush that we all get and we all love. And and until I think you've experienced that, until you've been in the stadium, until you've seen the, 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 the sort of the grass for the first time and, and got that sense of what a live game is like in front of 25, 30,000 people, it's not the same as TV. You know, it's, the real thing is, is better. And the more people we can get to experience that, the better shape we're going to be in for the future.